Hello, this video will be looking into the fractional distillation of crude oil. This is the second in the series of videos that I've created about crude oil and its processing. In the previous video, we had looked into how crude oil is formed. And in this particular video, we're just going to look into once the crude oil is formed, how do we process it further to separate crude oil into the different fractions. So some of the keywords that we'll be looking in this video is about distillation, fractional distillation, about evaporation, condensation. And the two key words here is temperature gradient and boiling point. So in your answers at GCSE and A level, if you're ever asked a question on fractional distillation, these are the two terms that you must include. So let's review some of the learning that we did from the previous video. How do we get crude oil from? So we had looked into that crude oil is basically obtained from biomass. That is the resource made from living or recently living creatures. But this happens over billions of years where the plants and animals sink to the bottom of the sea, get covered by sediment. And there are three things happening here because of the buildup of the sediment. You've got to mention high pressure, high temperature, and more importantly, absence of oxygen. Due to these three factors, the dead plants and animals get con converted into crude oil. And it's this crude oil then, which then rises up and eventually forms the reservoir. So how do we separate it? So we use the method fractional distillation. So it's only because the constituents in the crude oil contain different boiling points. Now, what are the constituents of crude oil? Crude oil basically contains a mixture of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are those compounds that contain only hydrogen and carbon molecules. So only hydrogen and carbon atoms, not molecules. So hydrocarbon will contain only hydrogen and carbon atoms. And when you heat it, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to heat the crude oil. And when the crude oil is heated, it will undergo vaporization. When it vaporizes, it will go up the fractionating column. And you can see that there is a temperature gradient here. So the temperature gradient will cause difference in temperature in the crude oil in that fractionating column. So when the vapor passes to the top of the fractionating column, it will undergo condensation and it will turn into liquid. So that's your fractionating column and that's where the separation of hydrocarbons takes place. So in, within that, you heat crude oil so you've got that temperature gradient, the difference in temperature along that long fractionating column. So at the bottom, you've got 350 degrees Celsius and at the top, it's quite low. So a question was asked, I think it was in 2019 exam paper, that what should be the temperature of the furnace where you're heating crude oil? And the answer should have been, you're, you want the temperature to be above 350 degrees. So any answer from 350 to 400 degrees centigrade would have been acceptable. So you need to heat it above the uh, boiling point so that you know that all the crude oil components have boiled off. So at different parts of the fractionating column, you will collect different fractions. Now, fraction is a word given to the different set of compounds that are collected alongside the fractionating column. So they will boil off depending on their boiling point. So at the top, you will see a lot of compounds boiling off, which have got lower boiling point, whereas at the bottom, you will have compounds with long boiling point. So you can see that at the top, you've got gas coming out, petrol that's used in um, motor vehicles, that comes out next. Then you've got the diagrams here, the pictures represent here, the different uses of these fractions. And as you go down, you can see the physical state of the fraction changes and you get a thick gloopy liquid at the bottom, indicating that 
the boiling point was so high that it is still in that liquid form. It doesn't go higher up. And you will find that the number of carbon atoms also change down that fractionating column. So it's interesting to note that at the top, where the boiling point is quite low, the molecule will have very small number of carbon atoms. So that's the trend that happens down that fractionating column. So small molecules always will have low boiling point. They are very volatile. Volatile means how quickly something can turn into gas. And the top, the refinery gases, the petrols, these are all very volatile. They flow easily. That means they are uh, the viscosity is low. So they're not as gloopy as honey, but they flow easily like water and they burn very easily. They ignite easily. They catch fire. The flammability is high. Therefore, so these compounds can be used as fuels because these are the qualities of good fuels. So anything that you collect at the top, they are useful as fuels. Anything that's collected at the bottom, they're not as desirable as fuels, but there are still some uh, compounds that might be used as fuels, but generally we tend to use compounds that are smaller in size for a fuel. So let's look into an exam question. Now this is from some years ago. So crude oil is used to produce polyethene, so that's one of the byproducts and we'll look into in another video how you can go from crude oil to obtaining long chain polymers so so far we've just gone from crude oil to get hydrocarbon separation into fractions so we'll study in another video about alkenes and then polymers so you've got this column here they've shown you where naphtha is coming out Write a number two, three, four, or five next to each stage so that the description of fractional distillation is in the correct order. Number one and six have been done for you. So we know that the crude oil is first heated to 350 degrees Celsius. You've got to now figure out what happens next. So you could pause the video and give it a go and literally write down the numbers two, three, four, and five, and then you can come back and check the answer. Okay, if you have done the work and if you've just come back to check the answer, let's see. So once you heat it, most of the compounds will evaporate. Any liquid will flow down to the bottom and the hot vapor will rise up. And once it rises up at the top end, the vapors will cool. And then the, when it cools at its boiling point, the fraction will then condense. So overall, we've got... So far, we've looked into the key words. We've used all of those words. We've looked into how fractional distillation of crude oil is carried out. So this question could come as a six marker answer. Explain the steps on how crude oil it can be separated into fractions. So I've created another video on exam, exam question practice. So you might want to watch that. But so far, this is what we've covered, a quite a six marker question, very important key points. So please do ensure that you've got all these points written down in your notebook and you usually put it down as a revision card. So thank you for listening and watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.